everyone, and welcome to episode 22 of the Deus Ex Cinema podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Clues. With me, as always, Marty Adams. Hello. So, we decided to push back the Super Troopers 2 episode till next week, Mm -hmm. because we were going to do a bonus episode for Endgame, and then figured, well, this is probably going to take a while, let's just make it a full episode. Yeah, and again, more people probably care about Endgame than fucking Super (laughs) Troopers 2. (laughs) Until they hear our opinions, and then they're going to click off. (laughs) So, uh, it is Saturday the 27th, Mm -hmm. and we just... Woke up at 6 in the morning to go see Endgame at 7 in the morning. Oh, it was worth it. Because it was the only one with decent seats. Which we had pretty good seats. Yeah, actually it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Also, I mean, looking at the theater we had, even if we were far up, it wouldn't have been terrible. But my favorite part was the person that was sitting to my right that kept having to talk through the entire thing. Yeah. Making commentary on it. (laughs) Like when... You know, no spoilers yet. At the at, no spoilers. At the end, you know, did you hear them? They're like, oh, yeah. oh, yep, yeah. I'm like, stop. There was, there was, <laughs> there was uh, two points where people clapped. Uh huh. One at the end, one at like halfway through the third act, I guess. Yeah, the person next to me tried clapping for one, and no one else followed. And that was hilarious. They're like, I laughed really hard at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So there's that, and then there was also people. To the back left of me, who cried uh, three times. It wasn't that bad, like that. Yeah, none of it really deserved crying. But let's start with non-spoiler discussions mm-hmm. and um, general impressions, and then we can and decide: was it worth waking up at six a.m. and eating half a bar of taffy <laughs> at like seven thirty in the morning? Well, that's okay. Hold on, hold on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a layout so people know what to expect. We'll do non-spoilers reactions, <laughs> talk about how well it worked, give a rating, and then we'll go into more in-depth spoiler discussion. We can give it a percent of taffy eaten score. <laughs> Which, fuck the theater we went to. We went to a Marcus Theater that we usually go to because it's close to us. The showtime was 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. They sent out an email like a week ago saying, hey, we kn- we saw you have tickets for Avengers Endgame. Make sure you come at least a half hour early if you want concessions. So we get there at like 6.30. Mm-hmm. And they, they don't open until, like, 10 to 7. <laughs> yeah, like... So, there, luckily, we got in fast. There, there was a huge fucking line for concessions, and then they didn't even have half of it open. And they had... When we started... When we got in, there was one concessions line, and then they eventually opened it up to two. Yeah, and even then, they were still backed all the way across the room. Yeah, and I mean... And, you know, I mean, I worked at a movie theater for two years. Oh, I get it. I get it. But you're sold out. You knew... We bought these tickets, like, almost a month ago. Well, that and, like, especially, too, because, like, when it's only, like, what, 10, 15 minutes to showtime? Yeah. You know, and then you open the doors. Like, you should... Yeah. You sent out the... They sent out the email basically saying, hey, get here early so we can take care of you. Yeah. So we can and get then, this through. It'll be smooth. And then, yeah, they just left everyone standing outside in the fucking cold. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and if they had opened at 6.30... <laughs> I'm not even talking about any We're just bitching about the movie theater. We'll if, get they, there. if they had opened at 6.30... When we got there, there was us and then maybe, like, ten other people. Yeah. By the time they opened the doors, there was, like, 50. Yeah, and which was a lot more stressful, because now I'm like, well, what's the point of getting here early to beat the crowds if the crowds are already here? And if they had opened at 6.30, they could have already, like, they could have just taken care of people as they trickled in. Right. Because I would imagine that by the time the crowd got in there, it was hell to deal with. Oh, yeah, because instead of having, like, one customer every fucking 30 seconds, it was, like, one customer right after another after another. Which I've been there many times. It's not fun. <laughs> but they did it to themselves. <laughs> Anyways. Whatever. Avengers Endgame. Before we start, like usual, I think it would be good if we both establish maybe our relationship with the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe what we thought of Infinity War, because this is pretty much the second half of a movie. Which, and then maybe our expectations. Which, they, we do also have that other podcast talking about all the events. We do. We do have that Marvel episode. We, I'll put a link in the description. Yeah. But maybe just general, so that people don't have to listen to an hour long podcast yeah, as of what far we as, about each individual movie. As far as Infinity War, I liked Infinity War a lot the first time I saw it, yeah. which I think is similar to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of got tired of it. I yeah. you know, started to notice the, the holes in it mm-hmm. as time went on. But overall, I had pretty good feelings about Infinity War. Okay. And what about the MCU in general? Where, where do you kind of put yourself? Um... Honestly, I didn't really get into it till later. 
So, so then why do you have that Iron Man tattoo on your chest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not even Iron Man. It's just Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the Batman v Superman look. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really too attached to it, honestly. Yeah. And then Infinity War came, and I'm like, all right, I guess I'll be part of the bandwagon for a little bit. Okay. So, honestly, I came into it pretty late. Not super attached. Well, I think, I think too, with, with Infinity War and Endgame now, it was hard to not sort of jump in at least a little bit because there's n- it's such like a monumental moment right yeah like such a cultural cinema history moment of like 22 movies of build up 10 years or whatever leading up to fucking two movies in the theater right i mean it's nice it was nice having something to kind of look forward to saying like end game's going to be the big one you yeah. know like it's it's finally a movie that you have we have to plan out and be like yeah we're going to go see it like mm-hmm. as soon as possible you know aside from like you know john wick or whatever yeah and the new guys but like it's very the movies are very few and far between that like I actually plan ahead that yeah. I'm like, gonna go see them right away yeah typically it's like yeah they're coming out I'll see them if I see them look how sad Rico looks <laughs> she just said oh they're all fucking morose she's, she's got her legs sticking out straight yeah out. she's just like oh <laughs> Rico come here they're talking instead of paying attention to me you can do both um yeah so I, I like you kind of said I, I really liked Infinity War when it was first in theaters I enjoyed it a lot um, I didn't, so I, I, I saw it in theaters and I, I liked it a lot mm-hmm. and it, it, it sort of had an energy to it. I felt like, like I saw it in a pretty full theater, kind of like we just did for Endgame. Yeah. I didn't see it opening weekend. I don't think, but you know, there was like a, just a, just a weird aura around it when you were watching it, I felt like, mm-hmm. and I've watched it three times now. I just watched it two days ago to prepare for Endgame. And every time I've watched it, I like it less and less. <laughs> still like it. It's still a good movie for what it is. Honestly, it's still one of my favorite Avengers movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely put it up there for me, too. Um, as far as MCU goes, I've seen most of the movies. Um, they're you're usually pretty middling for me, where I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple, though, that stand out that are bad, I think, that are just straight-up bad movies. Um, and But then there's some that I really, really like. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Thor Ragnarok is awesome. Oh, that's what I was going to say. That's probably my top one so far. Yeah, uh, but I think that's mostly because I got Taika Waititi and they were like, make a Taika Waititi movie that's also an MCU movie. And that's why it's so successful. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming was good, though. But, yeah, so... Endgame, though, for... Initially coming out of it, you and I talked a little bit on the way home. Yeah. And we both, I think, came out at a pretty similar area... Where, <laughs> like when we were leaving the, th- le- uh, technically leaving the bathroom after leaving the theater, <laughs> um, I said, well, that movie was kind of a wet fart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, we're, you're, ex- you're expecting a lot. Yeah. And you just get something a little bit less than that. And I think, obviously, you know, it, it, you got to be careful to not have sort of like a No Man's Sky situation yeah. where there was too much hype. Mm-hmm. I think this movie was susceptible for for a lot of people yeah but when you also have infinity war that kind of did the unthinkable really well mm-hmm. um there's still i think a reasonable amount of hope there that they could pull it off yeah but i would say that this movie is leagues below infinity War. i agree you know and i think its biggest weakness so far just generally was how infinity war seemed like that was that was gonna be it, you know. Yeah. They're making their like their finale, their masterpiece, their grand, yeah. you know, exit. And then it seems like they backtracked from that with Endgame. Like they're like, just kidding. We're actually this isn't actually. Yeah. You know the last movie. You know this actually isn't gonna wrap up all the plot lines. Yeah. You know because it still feels like, I, I left it still feeling like it's just a build up to their next movie. Yeah. You know, and this is supposed to be fucking Endgame, like. I it's got to end in the name. I understand they're suppo- you know they're trying to keep it going and everything, and they already have other movies planned like Guardians and like Spider Man, but like all I left with thinking about was like, oh okay, they're gonna there's now I have to go see the next one. That's all they're trying. It's an advertisement for the next Marvel movie. Yeah, you know, and I would I think it would have been a lot more solid if they said no, nope, this is it. Yep. You know, and well, committed to it, and especially because when you have. One of my biggest issues with Marvel movies is that so many of them lack any consequence. Mm-hmm. I get that the whole gimmick is that they're all part of this greater universe and they all interact with each other. And I think that's cool. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. 
But a lot of the times, the interactions are very negligible. Mm-hmm. And, like, that was my big issue with Civil War. Like, what the fuck was the point of Civil War? I don't know. It was like, oh, this this also happened. Let's yeah, see. it was like, you, you watched it just for the fight at the airport mm-hmm. and to get certain characters to meet each other. It was just and to then, introduce Ant-Man. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and Spider-Man. Because mm-hmm. they were like, oh my god, we got him from Sony. We got to make a movie for him. Um, and this felt very similar to me. Where now we're at the end of it. And I'm not 100% sure what really is different. Like, I, I obviously, there's characters that aren't coming back. Yeah. That's and, established. Well, but and, the whole, than, and the whole point was to kind of revert things back to normal. But... Well, I'm kind of talking about Infinity War and Endgame as one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. That, that, the whole, like, anthology was to try and fix what Thanos did. Yeah. You know, to bring things back to normal. So I guess in the end, technically nothing should be changed. But they, But that's so cheap. It is. Something should be changed. Like, you can't... I have a hard time buying that even... Even if you reverse what Thanos does, mm-hmm. I have a hard time buying that life just goes back to normal. Well, exactly. And they don't show any of what happens after. Yeah, so we're getting real close to spoilers. We're kind of toeing the line. <laughs> Just a little bit, I think. Yeah, whatever. It's... Um, so, a- another problem I had with this one, though, and then we could probably just get straight into spoilers, because I think that's the meat of this conversation. Yeah. And here's the thing. Even before I say this, if you like Marvel movies, if you love Marvel movies, either one, you already saw it, or two, you're already going to see it. If you don't like Marvel movies, this isn't going to change your mind. Yeah. At all. No. It's not, it's not a Thor Ragnarok. It's not a Winter Soldier uh, it's not an Infinity War where it feels like something different, something special, that there's something to grab onto if you're not a mm-hmm. Marvel fan. Um, yeah, this is pretty much fan service the movie. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, it's like they said, like, okay, yeah, everyone loved Infinity War. Let's just caricaturize it. Yeah. Uh, so, one of the things, though, that one of the problems I kind of have um, is that. Even it, though this movie is extremely fan y there's a lot of plot lines that it either doesn't conclude from the, you know the past three phases mm-hmm. or however you want to put it, and that it doesn't or like subplots that they kind of conclude, but in a way that doesn't match the rest of the movies. Right. Um, which I guess again we'll have to go into spoilers for that. So before we go into spoilers, Marty. What would you rate Avengers Endgame? Probably like a 6, 6.5 or something. So still positive. I mean, yeah, it's still positive. Mostly because, like, yeah, it does re- kind of wrap up Infinity War a little bit. But I'm probably... I'm not excited to see it again like I was with the first one. Okay. You know, and I, it, it was still well made. I mean, like, I was kind of trying to pay attention to the cinematography and the sound design. And again, you know, it has the budget to be pretty decent. Okay. So, I'll, I'll give it that on a technical side. I'm going to give it a four. I think if I watch it again, I would... So, normal. I, I think it's... I would normally go a five, right? Which, to me, is just perfectly average movie. Which is what I put most Marvel movies at, at the end of the day. But, I think I want to go with a four because... I can tell that if I watch this again... I'm going to get antsy maybe a third of the way through. I was going to say, yeah, I would get pretty bored. Honestly, I was getting pretty... It was getting pretty long-winded as it is. Yeah. And not only that, but I think that this movie has kind of ruined Infinity War for me even more. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give it a four. Um, which is probably going to piss a lot of people off if anyone gives a shit, which no one does. Mm-hmm. So we're fine. Yeah. But let's talk spoilers. Um, can I talk about what we didn't like? I, I did like stuff, so there's going to be positive oh, stuff. Yeah. But let's... So... If you don't want spoilers, click off now. I don't know why you're listening. If you haven't watched the movie, you probably have already. But <laughs> <laughs> So, where do you want to start, Marty? There's a lot going on here. I want to start with Mantis. <laughs> <laughs> we can start with Mantis. We can... Actually, no. I, ha- I have a point for that later. No, that's fine. I just... I, yeah. want, to, I want to start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the first scene of Avengers Endgame. Yeah. So, the first scene is Hawkeye. Teaching his daughter how to shoot an arrow, mm-hmm. and his family's putting mayonnaise on hot dogs because they're a bunch of assholes. White people. Yeah. Uh, 
And so he's teaching his daughter how to shoot the arrow, and you know something's going to fucking happen. Oh, yeah. And it's got... It's, it's shot, and it's like... The music is like... They're going for this really, really ominous tone because you know that something's going to happen. Right? Oh, yeah. You know that you know that this isn't going to go well for him. Mm-hmm. And so you watch as he teaches the daughter to shoot the arrow. She gets a bullseye right away. Mm-hmm. And he calls her Hawkeye. And it's cute or whatever. And then she goes behind the tree and she's just gone. And he's like, what happened? And he turns around and the rest of his family's gone. Mm-hmm. And then you get the title card. And it says Avengers Endgame. And it has a really shitty transition where it switches from Avengers to Endgame and it's a different font for some reason. But that Yeah, and the music basically totally shifted to something from like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it was very bizarre. Um, I hated this opening. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was probably the most cheesy fucking, you know, intro. Well, and because it's, it's obvious the entire time what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. It's like... It felt like it was just supposed to be like, hey, don't forget Hawkeye's here. He's in this one now. Yeah, and they're like, okay, here's some exposition so you, so you know, you care, and it shows why he cares. Yeah, but it was, it just felt so flat. Um, so like, because you, there's no tension, and the way that they, sh- that they do it with the daughter going behind the tree and then the family just gone, there's not even any emotion to it. Because they just disappear. And then he's like walking around and he's whistling. And he's going, ah, boys. Yeah. Like, I was expecting them to sort of at least replicate um, the Spider-Man scene at the end of Infinity War. Yeah. Because like, I, I feel like if he had been there, you know, and she's about to shoot the arrow. And then the arrow goes and he's like waiting for it. And it completely misses. And she's like, he's like, what? And he turns. And then she's like falling to ash right next to him. And he catches her and there's an emotional moment. Because you don't know his family. No. You have no connection to these characters. And then he turns, he's like, what the fuck? And then and then he sees the rest of the family go away. And then it cuts to the title card. And there's like dramatic music the whole time. I feel like that would be much more effective because then it sort of has the same effect as Infinity War where you just jump right into it. Well, then you have to think about what... Hawkeye wasn't really there for Infinity War. Yeah. You know, so did he... I forgot, did he know what, this, what Thanos was going to do? No. Because I think he pretty much just said, nope, I'm not dealing with it. Yeah, and it's noped out, and so how? You know, his family just disappeared to him. He had no fucking idea why. Yeah, you know, and so what was what was his game at that point? Like, yeah, what was his goal? Yeah, you know? he just goes to Tokyo and beats people up. Now he just well, he went to Mexico first, stopped a cartel guy. Now he's just like, now I'm gonna beat up bad guys because that'll make me feel better. Yeah, but I, which is what you did before, and you stopped doing for your family. No, so what's, what's the point of all this? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, why? It still doesn't give him context for why he's like. Now I have to go after Thanos because, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it. And the the other thing about it too, is that. It's just feels. So, much like it's it's pulling its punches mm-hmm. right out of the gate, like right out of the gate. There's no tension to it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. There's no dramatic anything to it. Yep. And it just it's it's such a weird way to start it, I think. Yeah, it it felt like, you know, a false start, like, you know, you're yeah. fucking driving a manual car and you just killed the you know yeah. popped the clutch and killed it, and then you have to be like, oh, okay, hold on, let me restart it and try again. <laughs> and and I feel like either So I think that there's a gazillion different ways that they could have started this movie better. Because they could have started with that, mm-hmm. or because there's this weird thing that they do. Okay. It, it's The problem is that the timelines make it really hard to fucking... Yeah, organize. and there's, there's so much I want to talk about here. So, let's start... I want to talk about Thanos. Yep. Because Thanos was really good in Infinity War. I agree. He was calculating. He was very imposing. Which is extremely surprising because he's a completely CG character that's not even there. Right. But he's extremely intimidating. Well, Josh Brolin does such a good job with the mocap and yeah. the voice acting. The problem, one of the biggest problems with Endgame is that they completely fuck up Thanos. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes into the movie, they kill him. Yep. They chop his head off. Uh, just out of fucking nowhere. Which also, okay, so this is going to be a very helter-skelter discussion, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But one plot point I want to talk about that fucking sucks is when they're all back at base and they're trying to locate Thanos. Mm-hmm. And they have... Nebula say, 
uh, he's, he's going to go to the garden. Mm-hmm. He always talks about going to the garden. I know he's there. And they're like, okay. So you're like, okay, she's going to take him there. She knows where the garden is. But then Rocket Raccoon's like, this giant pulse came out of Earth, and then there was one two days ago. How did you not fucking know he was there? Yeah. You, you didn't need Nebula to bring up the garden. No. Did she even know where the fucking garden was? Like, it was completely pointless. And yeah. there's, there's so many things in this movie like that that are just baffling. And it's so sloppy. Well, because it feels like they try so hard to try and tie in all the characters into yeah. one thing all the time. You know, that they, they have to have it so, like, if one character has an idea, they all do. Or yeah. someone else does, you know? Yeah. Okay, so Thanos. Yeah. So they kill Thanos, and then... Which is, that, that scene was fine. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was fine. Because they find him and he destroyed all the Infinity Stones so he's super weak and then Thor cuts his head off. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, eventually they go back to the past to get the Infinity Stones and come back to the future and bring everyone back with a snap. Mm-hmm. Which I did like that they established the time rules right out of the gate. Yeah, They were like, okay... You know, they made it kind of funny, and they were like, all right, what we do in the past doesn't accept the future because now it's your future. That's how we're doing it. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's basically just to say, you know, hey, because I guess since we're doing spoilers already, yeah. how, like, you know, uh, future Nebula kills yep. past Nebula and she's fine. Yep. They were just like, it doesn't matter. Yep. It's it's completely different. It doesn't matter. Yep. Which I liked. I liked that a lot. Well, because it established rules that, like, you know, you could accept. Yeah, and it was like, all right, you know, we know this is going to get a little fucky, but that's this is just how we're doing it, mm-hmm. so stop worrying about it. And their explanation made enough sense. Yeah, no, you know, I get it. Because time travel's a paradox within itself, so you kind of have to do something. It was it was a unique take on time travel. So yeah, I'll, I dug it. I'll take it. Um, but so then they travel into the past, and then that's the Thanos you're dealing with, with for the rest of the movie, mm-hmm. which completely ruins Thanos. Yeah. Because he's from 2012? Yeah, he, he's... 2014? From, it would be right before Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So he has no Infinity Stones. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know who the Avengers are, really. Yeah. I mean, he gets all of his information from Nebula, and then, like, he they try making it personal at the end, but it's like... And he's like, oh, you're an annoying planet, but it's like, you haven't dealt with them yet. Like, you, there's no history here. Yeah. You're just going off of what you're assuming your future is based on... Like, you've got this information, then you're just filling in the gaps yourself. And so there's no emotion to it. And it, he's just an idiot. And he's not imposing at all. No. And they give him this fucking, like, Darth Maul sword. Which, at the, again, with that Darth Maul sword, all of a sudden he's, like, stronger with that than he ever was with the fucking Infinity Stones. Yeah. And, and then he's, like, chopping up Captain America's shield, which I thought it was... Vibranium, so it was invincible. Yeah. So what the fuck is the sword? He's like reflecting lasers with it. Yeah. It it just doesn't make sense. So Thanos, and and then they try giving him. They try. So I I think one thing that they they did very well with Thanos in Infinity War Mm -hmm. is that he's very, he's not relatable, but you can understand where he's coming. Well, and and that's that's what I've been thinking about. You know, is Thanos? You could understand that he might not always be the bad guy. You know. Yeah. he was a bad guy with honorable intentions. Yeah. And in this movie, they basically took that all away. Like, I could not be sympathetic with him at all. Yeah. Because now he's like, oh, instead of just doing that, I'm going to go all the way and kill everybody and yeah. start over. He's like, I'm going to wipe out the universe. It's like, wh- where the fuck is this coming from now? Why do we need a bigger plot for Thanos to have? And then every single line of dialogue that he has, mm-hmm. it's like they're trying to get quote like they're trying to make Thanos quotes you know because like everyone says the run from it try to avoid it you can't you, or whatever right. there's that quote and it's like every single line is supposed to be like this weighty philosophical like look how imposing I am yeah and it's just tiresome I just got sick of seeing well, him and I, I couldn't understand I couldn't understand why Thanos all of a sudden had shifted from like you know I'm just gonna take out half so everything else can thrive yeah to like I feel like in the in Infinity War he was really calculating and logical and didn't let his emotions get in the way of things. Yeah, you know. And yeah. now with this, now he's like, all right, that obviously doesn't work because the remaining people, the remaining life that's still here, is gonna question why and they're gonna fight back. Yeah. And so I I don't feel like Thanos would just destroy everything and start over. Yeah. I don't feel like that's how he would have operated in Infinity War. Yeah. That's not the character they built for him. Not at all. And especially when 
there's that moment where he destroys the Avengers building. Mm-hmm. And then he's sitting in the rubble waiting. And then there's Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. And he's just waiting for them to come fight him. And it's like, it almost feels like it's supposed to be like, there's this personal connection there where he's like, no, I'm going to do this because I'm, I want to beat you guys down. But he doesn't fucking know them because it's seven-year-old Thanos. Well, he, he knew of them. But he, he, there's no... That's it. Yeah, like the, this Thanos has not experienced the scene in Infinity War where they're on Titan and he stabs Iron Man in the stomach and he's like, I respect you. Yeah. That Thanos, that makes sense. Him waiting in the rubble to fight the mano a mano. This Thanos doesn't make any fucking sense. Because this dude's sending... He's still fucking like sending all of his goons that aren't even the three named ones to go after Quill and yeah. shit. Like, it just... He's putting it in this past Thanos completely ruins the character and completely neuters the movie. And it makes no sense why they did it. Right, because Infinity War, you're seeing him in his current time and you're like, okay... He's been this intimidating, you know, subtle, calculating force. Yeah. Because, you know, he has appeared in the other movies as, you know, this calm, waiting type figure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they just built up this past. So you, you could kind of imagine and fill in the blanks of what he did up until Infinity War. Yeah. And then in this, because they tell you what he did up, into, up to Infinity War. Yeah. It just totally takes away from it. Because I feel like my imagination gave him a way better character yeah. than they ever could. And there is this sort of sense... In Infinity War, where it was like, okay, all this time he's been planning, and he was kind of, he was kind of just trying to let his goons take care of it. But mm-hmm. now he's like, all right, fuck this, I'm coming in and I'm just gonna do this. Yeah. Like I'm taking care of it now. Mm-hmm. But then in this one, it's just like, he's still at the goon stage, and then he just brings his whole army to Earth, and he's like, all right, go get him. <laughs> it's like, and it just it feels like he's so rushing. It just doesn't feel like Thanos no. at all. No, it's. That's really the thing. And he doesn't have any of that kind of like, you know, it, the whole part about him being humanized in Infinity War, about him having to kill Gamora, you know, and him even feeling sympathy for Nebula and stuff like that. Yeah. It's all just out the window with this. Like, I feel like he doesn't care for them at all in this yeah. movie. He doesn't show it, you know, even though, he, you know, the past flashbacks from Infinity War yeah. make it seem like he was always this kind of caring father figure to them, even if he was yeah. like, really, really rough on them. Yeah. You know, and this one to make it just sound like he's just a dick. Even though they tried to still have him be carried by always every single sentence saying daughter, or in every single sentence they go father. Yeah, and it's so fucking annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, that was one of my biggest problems. It, it started getting to the point towards the end where I just didn't want him in the movie anymore. Yeah, I mean that wasn't even the exciting part, honestly. Like, yeah. if they were gonna focus on like his little group, I mean, I would have preferred them focusing on Nebula and like Gamora and yeah, all that a lot more. And one of the parts, one of the things to me, um, so while we're talking about the ending, is there's this huge goddamn battle scene mm-hmm. that is one of the ugliest, just visual noise. It looks like a fucking Transformers movie. It's like Transformers mixed with like the end of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, or like <laughs> or like Aquaman even. It's like if you took the end of Aquaman, mm-hmm. fucking took all the color out of it, and then made it ten times more visually confusing. Yeah. And there's just all this stupid shit, and it's all brown. Mm-hmm. It's all like a washed out brown, and everybody's just punching each other. Well, it reminds me of fucking like Dragon Ball Z, you know? Yeah. Where like, you know, everything's all green because it's like a nice su- sunny summer day or whatever at the Avengers base. Yeah. And then he comes and blows it all up. Everything's just a barren hellscape from yeah. there on out. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, and then, so, and that's right after they do the snap. So they do the snap. And that's at pretty much, I guess, the start of the third act. Mm-hmm. The, the fucking structure of this movie is nonsense. Yeah. Which is fine, because it kind of has to be. But the way they did it, so they they get the snap, Thanos attacks, there's the big battle. And then everybody comes back, finally. They're like, hey, we're bringing everybody back. Yeah. And it's so unsatisfying. Because not only after they snap... They're immediately attacked, and it's like 10 minutes before anybody comes back. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I'd already kind of forgotten. Like, the the excitement of them bringing people back was gone. Oh, yeah, because then at that point, you're, like, just waiting for someone to die. Yeah. And then they were, like, trying to give everyone these little moments. Like, they're like, okay, um, here's Spider-Man's moment, which I liked. Yeah. The the stuff with Spider-Man, some of the, there's moments in the big battle that are really good. 
Well, the, I feel like Spider Man was like one of the most true to himself characters this entire. Yeah, <laughs> like I loved I loved when he has the gauntlet and he he sets like his spider arms on kill and they're just stabbing <laughs> everything around him. <laughs> they're just complete badasses. Um, so Spider Man's good. I mean, they're really good at writing Spider Man mm-hmm. in the in the MCU. Well, then there's like the moment with Black Panther where like for no reason he's like give it to me. Yeah, and, and then he immediately loses it. I'm yeah, like, maybe that was, Hawkeye was doing way better. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> and he, you can instantly tell he turns to CG, and he's such a boring character because he's invincible in his fucking vibranium suit. He just does the purple pulses, yeah. and you have a CG dude, eh, which I mean, a lot of the battle is just complete CG. You have the CG dude running, doing these like weightless punches and kicks on these CG creatures that we don't give a shit about. They're the worst part of Infinity War. Oh yeah, like why does Thanos have all these like fucking like dogs? Yeah, and a monster dog thing. They, they look like, uh, and they look so shitty. They look like zombies from the Resident Evil movies. Yeah, that's like where did he get him? We get yeah, them? <laughs> like, yeah, and, and he just has ships of them and these big fucking like whale things that look legitimately exactly like something from Aquaman. Although it was pretty funny seeing one get punched in the face. That was cool. I, I, Ant Man's big and he punches one and crashes into the ground. He's probably like never. That thing's never been punched in. The face. <laughs> <laughs> um, is you know, and so Spider Man's moment was good. Um, another moment I really liked was Captain America getting Thor's hammer. Yeah, right. That's the part where everyone clapped. Yeah, that was the first clap. Which was a that that was a pretty badass feeling. Scene. It was worth it. I, I I liked it. I liked it a lot. And they did a very good job because well, that actually isn't even during the battle. No. That's back when it's the three of them fighting Thanos. Yeah. But let's talk about it now because we're talking about it. Yeah. So Thor's about to get killed, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then you the just same, see the, the same way Thanos was going to get killed. Yeah, driving the axe in. Uh, poetic. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait for that to pop up on our movie details in three weeks. People will be like, oh my god! It's like, this was fucking script writing. That's, it's That's a, not clever. It's supposed to be obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, there's the reveal that Captain America has it. And the choreography for that seems fucking awesome. <laughs> like, he's doing all these combos. He's like, hitting the shield with the hammer. And like, throwing the shield and then bouncing the hammer off it. It's awesome. But like, just it's the really camera work, panning over to like, yeah. follow the hammer straight to Also, it's like, Captain America, like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's like the big swell of the music. That scene is great. It was really good. It nailed it. Um, so there's that in there. And then there's like, I'm trying to think of other scenes in the battle um, that were good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're there. It doesn't really matter right now. Yeah. But uh, there was one moment in particular that I do want to talk about in the big battle that was absolutely awful, I thought. Mm-hmm. And it's awful for two reasons. Um, one, it feels very condescending. <laughs> And two, it ends up being completely fucking pointless. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's all blurring together. You're gonna have to. All right, all right. I was just, I was just wondering if it stood out to you. So I want to talk about Captain Marvel later, mm-hmm. but it involves Captain Marvel. So there's the part where Captain Marvel comes back and she destroys the ship, and she's kind of fucking shit up a little bit. And then Spider Man is about to die, and they're like, okay. And she's like, here, give me the gauntlet. I'll go back in time. I'm gonna take care of this. Mm-hmm. I got it. I'm Captain Marvel. I have a short haircut, so I'm cool now. I'm faster. <laughs> I'm more aerodynamic. Uh, God, her haircut looks so stupid and weird. It would have been better if it wasn't like just that fluffed out. and then. Yeah, it was so thing. big. Yeah, yeah. anyways. <laughs> um, so Spider-Man gives it to her, and then Spider-Man's like, how are you going to make it through all of them? And she's like, I'll take care of it. And then, not even joking, every female hero comes to that one spot and only the females and they're like all right it's woman power time yeah. and the way it was shot you had obviously not Scarlett Johansson because she's dead <laughs> but, spoiler alert well, we're talking spoilers we're talking spoilers. but you even have fucking pepper pots in the suit which is the stupidest goddamn thing ever because I know it was like Iron Man 2 or 3 where she was in the suit for a little bit yeah. but now she has like her own suit and she's really fucking good at it it's like where the hell did this come from yeah um, Especially because in the last one, she was all like, don't go, you know, you yeah. can't go to space to save No more world. surprises. Just stay with me. It's like, well, and now you're totally fine with your super suit. You're leaving your child at home and you're both going to go fight the giant fucking army? Yeah, like, yeah. who's watching the kid? <laughs> um, but so, so you have liter- literally every female character in one group and they're like, we're going to go, we're going to go fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. And it's so pandering. Like, it's so like, look at all this femme power we have. And they go out there, you get maybe two minutes of them kicking ass, and then they get beaten, it's over. Yeah, well, it's, it's, what's the point of that? Well, especially because, who's a red chick? Who's a, um, 
the oh uh, Scarlet Witch. Yeah, like she was doing actually doing pretty good. Yeah, she was, she was cool. She was actually able to like start actually kicking Thanos' ass a little bit, like yeah. you know ripping off his armor and all that. Yeah, and then they just open up the orbital lasers. and yep. fucking. And then she's That's kind of done. She's done for the scene. Yeah, I mean, it, which sucks. It's like every like she. We finally had a character that was like, yeah, I could take care of Thanos. Yeah, I'm coming back. I'm gonna get my fucking revenge. Which I was hoping they would do with Doctor Strange, because the best fucking part in Infinity War is when it's Doctor Strange versus Thanos, and it's like a goddamn wizard fight. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, they have crystal walls, and they're turning shit into birds. <laughs> they're like sucking up fire. It's awesome. Yeah. And in this movie, Doctor Strange picks up five guys at once and slams them into the ground, and then he holds back water. Yeah. That's it. That's all he does. Mm-hmm. And and the, the thing I hate most about the scene with all the women, right? Because I'm, I'm not misogynistic. And I'm fine with a scene like that. It, it just The way it's shot, they do like this hero shot of all the females. Mm-hmm. And then... Because there's been talks for a very long time about them doing like an all female cast spin off movie. Which, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like it's actually a good thing to put out there. Yeah. You know, it is good showing, you know, people that, like, yeah, women can be powerful. They yeah. can be the heroes, you know? Yeah. But it's just, again, it comes back to Endgame and like all Marvel movies for the most part, but Endgame especially, it's just all about fan service. Yeah. Like, you know, at the expense of plot. Yeah, and cinematography because like how did for, in this scene for example how did they coordinate like that yeah you know how did they go from this massive battle spread across you know fucking like half a mile mm-hmm. and say like okay now we're all gonna group up yeah and do this thing for like 30 seconds yeah and which I I mean I can excuse because like it's they a do, comic book movie and they do that with everybody too but yeah. like and, and maybe that's more of a broad complaint for the concept in general is they have these massive scale battles and the Avengers, like the main group, they're always together somehow right when they need to be. Yeah. Which is another, you know, movie plot action thing. Yeah. But like, it would be nice seeing the scale of it, you know? Yeah. What, what happened, you know, like, uh, um, Doctor Strange is like, you know, at his sidekick guy. Yep. You know, the one that helped portal everybody in. Yep. You know, I want to see more of that shit. What's he doing? You know, they showed all of them put up the shields. Yeah. And I feel like a big his big group like that should have been way more effective. Yeah. Well, Sorry, that's besides the point. But like, <laughs> going back to the scene with all the females, though, mm-hmm. my big my biggest issue with it is that it just feels completely hollow. Mm-hmm. Like it, it feels like they didn't have that idea and think it would be cool to have like oh and then all the women come together and they do something kind of cool you know to give them a moment in the spotlight, which is good. But then they don't do anything with it. Yeah, and it, and it just feels like. Well, we'll just put this in here because people are going to like it. It's like, like if, then, if you want to make a message, let them win a little bit. Yeah. You know? Or even, like, they don't have to be in a group. Just show each one. Like, the part with Scarlet Witch is awesome. Yeah, th- that that was actually a pretty badass scene when she fucking, like, yeah. you know, jumps in and all the ground explodes. Yeah, and I was like, this chick's fucking cool. Like, just give each character one of those. Yeah. I, I, you don't have to do this, like, big grand gesture that doesn't amount to anything. Well, especially with be- Because you don't want... Because those heroes, they don't even end up being important. No, like Captain Marvel, they play her up like she's going to be the savior. Yeah. You know, she's going to come back from her fucking space mission, you know, and they start to lead up to it. You know, she destroys the ship, it comes down, yeah. like, starts turning the tide of battle, and she's like, I got the gauntlet, don't worry. And then, and then she- Thanos throws his staff right into the, you know, time machine thing. And then that's it for her. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah, she kind of stalls him with the gauntlet. And again, it starts to feel like, yeah, okay, she has the power to hold the, keep the gauntlet from being used. She starts overpowering him. Yeah, and, and then he, he grabs the power stone, punches her with it, and she's just out for the And that's it, which is such a shame, because, like, especially with Captain Marvel still being, like, the newest, like, third-party movie that's out there. Yeah. It's like, it would have been good if she was the key yeah. to defeating Thanos, because it seemed like she had all the potential to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how they set it up. And I want to talk more about Captain Marvel because, just real briefly, and then I want to go back to the battle. Because mm-hmm. um, Captain Marvel is completely wasted in this movie. Yeah. She's we- she's in the beginning. Uh, she's really fucking lame in the beginning. She's uh, she's just an ex machina. Yeah, she, she's, just, she, she just, like shows up out of nowhere, saves Tony and Nebula, Nebula. brings them back, and then all of a sudden she's like... It's you know, five years later. She has a haircut. And she's like, well, I have other planets to help. So I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. 
I forgot she was in this fucking movie by the time she came in. Well, because well, you got to back up, too. It's like, there was the one scene when they were all in there, and she's like, I'm going to go take care of Thanos. Yeah. You know, which I can understand. Yeah, she's a third party. She's not really part of the Avengers. Didn't really know about him. Yeah. She's like, I'm just going to go beat the bad guy like I've always done. Yeah. And they're like, no, we operate as a team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like, okay, now we operate as a team. Yeah. Like, I would have loved it if she would have gone out to fucking fight Thanos by herself. Yeah, and then and just got the shit kicked out, of and, then, and then come back and be like, maybe we should work as a team. <laughs> I may have stepped overstepped my bounds here. I apologize. You know, but like, and, yeah, and then she comes back and she blows up the ship, and I, I mean, one problem I have with her, I think, is just the character itself is boring because mm-hmm. it's just Superman. It's just Superman with more sound effects. Yeah, and like, we, I didn't see Cat Marvel. I don't think you did either. No, I've been trying, but the theaters are still full. Yeah, and, and it was just like. Okay, so she can fly, she can shoot beams, but like it's not visually interesting. Like, you know, it's not like Scarlet Witch, yeah. where she can do all this cool shit. Um, even Gamora is interesting in the way like she de- deals with combat and that sort of stuff. Nebula's more interesting. She's just boring. She's such a boring character. Yeah. Um. So g- going back to the battle, though, I don't want to talk about specifics too much unless you want to. But the big thing that I wanted to talk about was, I feel like that that was the worst way to end this movie. Because we already got that at the end of Infinity War. Mm-hmm. And so you get to the point where it's just the handful of survivors from Infinity War, and then they're getting the shit kicked out of them by Thanos, and then Thanos' his army is there. And then Doctor Strange opens all the portals, and everyone comes back. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there, and I was just like, I just... I've been here. I saw this. Like, we watched all the Wakanda people do their chant in charge of the army. We saw... All of Thanos' generals get killed. Like, we've been to all of these plot points. I don't care anymore. Well, it made it feel like, you know, all of the stuff that you saw in Infinity War and all the previous movies just didn't matter. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, his second command, you know, a guy with the house with a rock, psychic powers and stuff. Yeah. You know, in the last one, you just saw him get sucked out of a fucking spaceship. Yeah. And now he's back. It's like, well, now I don't I don't care, you know. Yeah. I'm already moved past him. And he's, like, barely in it. Anyways, he just... He, <laughs> He walks up and then he, I think he legitimately has one line. Or he has like three lines. Because yeah. he says, he says something of like, look, Tha- Master Thanos. And then Master Thanos is like, rain fire, like a fucking Roman general. Well, and, and he was also part of the scene when he was extracting Nebula's like sympathetic. Oh, he vision. was there too, yeah. You're right. He was in it more than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, none of the other generals have any fucking lines though. And then I thought it was so stupid that when Thanos is like, rain fire, he's like, but what about our troops? When in Infinity War, they just had them trying to get through the Wakanda barrier, just literally killing themselves? Yeah. It's like, since when do you fucking care? They're like, you have a million of them. They're like infin- infinite. Yeah, you're just Zerg rushing. You don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, and, and the whole battle, it's just, it's so long. And it's like, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's not, tiring. It's not satisfying at all. No, not at all. There, there's no, especially because when you have them getting everyone back just like a setup plot point by the time you're at the battle just, what else is there like okay we're gonna stop him from snapping again all of a sudden and and he wants to erase the whole universe and then make a new one yep it's like what the fuck where did that come from like why why did i don't understand why they felt the need to escalate it well and it happened so fast too because like, yeah. what, what was really the timeline between thanos finding out about you know the Avengers and their plan, yeah, and uh, you know, and his trip to the planet, to to Earth, and like, how long did he have to think about that? Because the only reason he made that decision, I'm going to get rid of everything and start completely over. He made that just again on seeing Nebula's memories, yeah, and just seeing, oh, they're going to fight back. Yeah. Like you can't tell me that a calculated person like Thanos, who was so meticulous and took so much time, wouldn't have thought there's going to be resistance. Because, I mean, all through Infinity War, he deals with people telling him that it's bad. And that's and a bad idea. And he's like, nope, it'll be it'll be for the best. You know, you, I'll take the hit for that. Yeah, you just don't understand. Mm-hmm. And then even in this one, when he sees himself die, he's like, oh, it's fate. It, it, it's completed. That's yeah. what that's my answer. Which, that, that felt like Thanos to me. Yeah. But then now he's like, I want to be God and make a new universe and nurture everybody so that they don't need yeah, and so they appreciate things, and they, they mention like, "Well, what about all the bloodshed to get here?" And he's like, "They won't know." Yeah, and I'm like, "That doesn't feel like Thanos to me." Yeah, <laughs> like, 
And so, like, what, you're just going to be God now? Like, that's not what you want. Yeah. <laughs> you want to just fuck off to your garden and chill and know that you did what you had to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so the, the battle really, it was a real big letdown to me, honestly. Like, I felt like there was no real st- stakes to it at that point. Because I'm yeah. like, I'd, we had already seen it. We already, yeah. we had a loss already. Yeah. You know. And, it, and it's so long. And it's, it's all filler. All it is is just look at this character. Now look at this yep. character. We're bringing them all back, guys. But it's all... And, and the thing that sucks is that they don't... I don't think they realize that the best fight scenes in Marvel movies are the small ones. Yeah. Like Captain America with the hammer. Yeah. Again, like, they started really good with that. Yeah. Or the first Avengers when they're all together and they're comboing stuff together mm-hmm. and like shooting lasers off shields. The fight at the end of Civil War where it's just Iron Man versus Bucky and Captain America. Yeah. Like... When it's small scale, it's so much more interesting. It's so much more tense, and you can. And there's stakes. Yeah, there's stakes, and then sometimes they shoot it, so you can actually see what the fuck is happening. Because mm-hmm. goddamn, I hated that fight scene between Captain America and past Captain America. Yeah. You could not see what the hell was going on. No, and I feel like, you know, if they just sat down and just explained it a little bit. Yeah. You know. So. Or I mean, there's that, or like there's because a big problem I've always had with the. Uh, with the Marvel movies and especially the Captain America ones are really bad about it is the fist fighting looks like shit because it's yeah. all shaky cam you can barely especially the fight scene with Hawkeye and the Japanese dude mm-hmm. was garbage oh yeah it was like a something straight out of an anime yeah I, <laughs> I mean it was to the point where the Asian dude charges and you just hear a cut sound and he's like oh my stomach it's like you got cut off screen yep. like you're not even showing me the action you're supposed to be this like epic pouring rain Tokyo nightlife sword fight mm-hmm. and it was just lame as hell yeah which I mean that setting I wouldn't mind a whole movie just about that shit yeah that'd like, be cool some like ninja assassin guy going on killing Japanese mob bosses that'd yeah be sweet that'd be awesome that'd be, that'd be really cool but we got Hawkeye yeah yeah and, and, and then there's like all the shit with uh Valkyrie on the Pegasus it was all lame as hell yeah which sucks is like you know Valkyrie was a pretty cool character in yeah. like Ragnarok and stuff yeah and then now it's like, yeah, she's here. Look how badass she is. All right, moving on. Which, uh, which that that's the thing about all the characters. It's like, yeah, check them out. They're back. All right, on to the next guy. Yeah, you know, which is hard to avoid. Which I get. That's the whole concept of the last two movies is we're bringing them all together. Yeah, but, but it's the, like give the, give them a reason to be like together. And yeah, important. Like don't take away from their power and their you know presence. Yeah, for the sake of having them together because they like each on their own had some moments that were like, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool, they're badass, they mm-hmm. mean something. Yeah. It's like it trivializes them. Well, and, and again, going back to the smaller scale, it works better in Infinity War because you have two battles at once. Mm-hmm. So you have this really small scale one, but then even the big one, there's so many fewer characters. Yeah. And with all, like, the timey-wimey bullshit, they could have done something like that here. Like, they could have just fucking copied Inception and mm-hmm. have, like, these multiple timelines that all need to coincide at the exact point. Yeah. Because that's instant tension and much more interesting. But another thing I wanted to talk about was all these characters that were absent and then just kind of come back. Because mm-hmm. you have Valkyrie, which they don't even show in Infinity War. No. You have Krieg. You have Krieg's buddy. Well, I thought have... all—I thought they all just died on the ship. Yeah, because you, you, sh- you don't you don't see them. Like, what were they doing then if they didn't get snapped? Just floating yeah. through space? And, well, and they didn't even get snapped because they were just chilling in that in New Asgard. Well, yeah, and that because that's the thing. Because what happened in the very beginning of Infinity War is Thanos comes and he kills fucking everybody he kills half that's what you think yeah you know and then the ship explodes doesn't it because it's all burnt and i I, there's this weird disconnect with infinity war where the way it shows him kill all the asgardians it looks like he killed everything but what technically happened is that he all you're just seeing the half that he killed i guess but but it's stupid because it doesn't make sense. And then these guys come back and it's like, where the fuck were but you the, last the week? ship was all half exploded. Yeah. You know, and they're floating through space. That was the same ship that Korg and Valkyrie were yep. on. You know, and Korg's fine. Yeah. He's just a new Asgard chilling, playing yeah. video games, playing it, Fortnite. Yeah. Which yeah. I hated too. <laughs> the Fortnite in, reference. Throwing in the Fortnite reference. It's, it's better like, than Black Panther where they did a what are those reference. Yeah, and then, then Hulk's like dabbing and shit. Yeah, that was... Like, Stop! It's awful. <laughs> and, and you're going to be so terribly dated in a year. Um, but so I mean, you have those three characters that come back. Mm-hmm. They give Pipe, Pipe, Piper Potts, Pepper Potts. I have no idea. You give fucking Gwyneth Paltrow way more to do. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole bunch of other characters too that I'm drawing a blank on right now. 
Well, because that's the thing. There's so Nick many. Nick Fury comes back at the end. There's so many that you can't even pay attention. You can't remember him. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. And another big pro- character that had this problem was Hulk, because mm-hmm. they had Thor Ragnarok, where he was Hulk, a majority of the time, and they had Infinity War. They were like no Hulk. Except towards the beginning, he gets the shit kicked out of him, and then he has, like, erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And in this one, they're like, all right, now they're just mixed together. Well, and that's the thing, especially because they started in Infinity War, they really started to build on the whole, like, he's afraid of bringing Hulk out again. Yeah. Because of what happened in Ragnarok. Yeah. You know, they start building this inner tension and conflict, and then they're like, nope, now they're the same, it's fine. Yep. It's like, come on, man. He, He just... Completely accepted Hulk, so now he has the big size. Well, because he, he, he used science gamma radiation or whatever to, like, bring out the strata Hulk, but keep his normal brain. Yeah. So he's like, what, he was so worried about Hulk before, and he basically killed him? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's the thing that doesn't make sense, because when Hulk comes out, he looks different. He actually, like, Hulk's his own personality. Yeah, Hulk's like a whole different person, just trapped in, like, Banner's body, yeah. kind of. So now what the fuck? So he's like, yeah, I care about Hulk, but I'm going to just kill him so that way I can have his body. Yeah. <laughs> and then even in the final battle... There's no Hulk. Yeah. At all. I guess... I, oh, there's a little bit, but he, he fucked up his arm with yeah. the stones. But still, it, it it's bizarre. It's so... Mm-hmm. The one thing I did like, though, is that they made Banner smart again. Yeah. Because um, that was really shitty that they did in Thor Ragnarok and Infinity War. Because mm-hmm. he's introduced originally as, like, this dude's as smart as Tony. Like, this... He's up there. Yeah. And then they just made him a comic relief dumbass. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that they brought his smarts back. Um, Especially... I, I like Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo is great. Um, but he, he feels so wasted here. Mm-hmm. And there's just... I, I got that with a lot of characters. Where it was like, really... You only needed Thor, Captain America, Iron Man. Yeah. Which I, I can see them trying to do, you know, because like... They're the core, but... And two of them are dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just feels so weird when there's all these other incendiary characters on the outskirts that are always there but never used. Yeah. Well, and especially because, like, they did try and build character into them in previous, like, the individual movies. Yeah. You know, again, like, you know, Valkyrie, they played her up as just some, you know, badass. Her, yeah. Like, all the Valkyries yeah. were, like, one of the strongest forces in Asgard. Yeah. You know, and then they just, like, basically cameo her. And it's the same with all the other characters, too. Yep. You know, it feels like they're just there for the sake of it, and they're not these like. They're, they're like it's like they played out like they'll never be as good as Captain America and Thor and Iron yeah. Man and stuff like that, which it blows my mind that like Iron Man would be stronger than like Valkyrie. Yeah. In reality, you know. And, and the whole Thor sucks in this movie. Yeah, they're like, let's make him just a fat comic relief character. And and I think Thor is something that the MCU has struggled with for a while. But they nailed it in Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. He was perfect. He was so good. He was charming, funny, and he was badass. Still. Yeah. And, and, but, like, he still had that sort of sense of, like, that Norse warrior personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, you know, because the first one, he's an idiot. And he's just not fun. The well, that's because he's full of... He's supposed to be full of himself. They yeah. showed some character development. They built up his character. Yeah. To, so he's, like, living up to his expectations. Which, I guess, this one was all about breaking... Saying that I, he doesn't have to live up to those expectations. He can do what else, he, whatever he wants. Yeah. But, like, they backtracked his character development. Yeah. In a way that didn't feel earned. Yeah. At all. Um, so... I guess that kind of leads into one thing I wanted to talk about uh, was this movie, which is another MCU problem, really struggles with tone. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many scenes where they're trying to do the little Marvel, uh, like, quips. So many of them aren't funny. Yeah. Um, And, and, you know, there's some stuff like when the team's back together and they're building the, the time machine and, like, some of the parts where they go back and it's like, okay, that stuff's good. You know, that's that's fine to have lighthearted. Like, I'm not saying the entire movie needs to be really morose and sad. Yeah, I mean, for example, like, part of the reason I like Guardians of the Galaxy so much is because it is, like, a light version of the Marvel Universe that you can just sit back and enjoy. Yeah. But there were so many moments in this that just felt robbed of the potential tension that they had or, like, the feeling of something big's about to happen. They 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 lose their impact for the sake of a a one-liner. Yeah, that sucks. Like, I think the only one-liner that I really laughed at was when Tony hugs Peter. Yeah, and he's like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, like, that, that was, like, the only thing that I found that 
the only one line early because there's other funny parts like and, Hulk interacting with the kids was funny yeah but again because like you know for uh Peter they you know again that fit his character so well yeah you know because that's something that he would say yeah yeah um so that was a big issue I think I, th- I thought some of the some of the writing was really bad um especially again going back to that Tokyo scene mm-hmm. when like uh, Black Widow literally says the line killing these people isn't gonna bring your family back and it's like sh- no shit like exactly. obviously that's what you're trying to say don't just fucking spell it out you yeah. do it repeatedly mm-hmm. uh, Iron Man had a couple too where he's like I'm doing this because of this. And I was like, dude, well, we get it. And, and there was, like, the one scene, you know, after he figured out that the time travel is possible. Yeah. I feel like that that was probably one of the most powerful scenes in that whole plot. Mm-hmm. About him trying to decide whether he it's worth risking his current family. Yeah. And his current life. Yeah. For the, the sake of everybody else, you know. And they after they moved past that, they basically said, yeah, it'll work out no matter what. Yep. He's gonna have it. He's going to have his wife and daughter. Yeah. Like, all the time, no matter what. Yeah. You know, which is a shame, because I thought that was probably the most real, con- like, internal conflict yeah. out of the entire movie. Because is he willing to be the hero and save the world, save the universe, you know, at the sake of his expense of his family? Yeah. And especially when, one thing we talked about a couple days ago before, uh, when I was rewatching Infinity War, was that the Infinity War had a great theme to it of mm-hmm. people not being able to make sacrifices yeah. and that's the reason Thanos succeeds is because he's the only one willing to make those really awful sacrifices right and I know I had said to you that I was going to be really disappointed if this movie didn't pay off on that theme and it doesn't even fucking acknowledge it no nope. like it kind of starts with the whole Tony Stark's family and I got excited I was like okay they're going to rope it in he's going to have to sacrifice his family uh, Captain America's probably gonna have to sacrifice some people. And then there's a soul stone bit. Yep. And then there's the soul stone bit. I was like, they're gonna have to make sacrifices, and not a- everybody's gonna be able to make it out of this. And then they just don't do anything with it. Like, yeah. There's no, there's no theme to this movie whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like I, why did they win this time? But you know, what changed? Right. I mean, it's not. There really wasn't any character development that allowed them to overcome. Yeah. Thing. Because, I mean, the whole thing about Infinity War was how the reason why they kept failing is because they kept acting on their emotions. Yeah. You know, and they tried doing what they thought was, you know, right. Or yeah. they tried saving the ones they cared about. And I don't feel like they really had to face that conflict in this one. Not at all. I, and, I mean, even even in Infinity War, Captain America, it said multiple times, we don't trade lives. Mm-hmm. So, screenwriting 101, that's got to come back. And it just doesn't at right. all. Like, give give him the chant, the choice again. Yeah. Give them the choice to say. I mean, I guess they kind of do with the soul stone, but they depict like the two characters that had the least impact for that scene. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but so you you have Black Widow and Hawkeye, and they both want to sacrifice themselves, but th- that one doesn't pay off on the theme at all because Hawkeye wasn't even fucking in the first movie, mm-hmm. so there's no development there. And two, they both just want to sacrifice themselves, which isn't trading lives. It's just sacrificing yourself for the greater good. And, that, and that's the whole bit of the soul stone. I was kind of wondering why the soul stone thing even worked for them. Yeah. Because you were supposed to sacrifice something you love. Yeah. And if you're throwing yourself over, you're not sacrificing anything. Yeah. The other person isn't sacrificing anything. Yeah. Because you have... I The way they made it sound is like you had to be the one to give up something. Yeah. Like Thanos gave up Gamora even like... And it, it, if Gamora would have gone along with it, it wouldn't really have been sacrificed, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. Which I guess you could maybe... Like, the apologists could say, yeah, but Hawkeye had to drop her. But, like... He didn't have a choice. He didn't, yeah. he didn't try to. What the he fuck else could he do? He and did, she kicked off. He didn't make that decision. He, yeah. he wasn't like, okay, we're in this position, goodbye. You know? Yeah. He wasn't going to let her do it. Yeah. And then even thematically, it's like, they're not learning anything because they're both trying to kill themselves, which mm-hmm. is completely different. Hawkeye wasn't in the first movie, so he had nothing to do with that theme. And Black Widow had nothing to do with that theme either. And th- I feel like... Were they really sacrificing each other anyway? I mean, they made it sound like they were, like, a couple. Like, they loved yeah. each other, like... But they were just, like, comrades? I mean, it's like they like cared they about each like... other because, yeah, they're teammates or whatever. Yeah. Or friends. Yeah. But, like, I feel like that doesn't have the same amount of sacrifice as, like, Thanos giving up his fucking daughter. Yeah. You know? Which you could say maybe that, you know, Hawkeye killing himself, he's giving up his family through his death. But they're already fucking dead. 
Yeah. And like, and that's not what happened anyway, so it doesn't matter because Black Widow died, and like she had the romance with Hulk that made no sense and now went nowhere. Yeah. Which was another thing. Another problem I had was that this movie really fucked up subplots. Mm-hmm. Um, like you have all this, you have this stupid forced building romance since Age of Ultron between Hulk and Black Widow that now goes nowhere. Except for Hulk being a little upset about it. Yeah. Um, for one scene. Right. You have... Uh, you don't really have any conclusion to the father-son relationship of Spider-Man and Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Iron Man just dies. And then you have Captain America coming back and he gives Falcon his shield to be Captain America instead of Bucky. Dude, he, who even... Honestly, it's like the other Iron Man. I don't even just know his name. Yeah. You know, him and War then, Machine. Yeah, War Machine, and then you know, Bird Guy. Yeah, is may may as well be his fucking name at this point. Yeah, like they're like the two biggest B side Avengers that just oh yeah, they're they just do they're anything. Just, they're just there for the sake of it. Yeah, like and they're more there to provide an emotional rock for their friend characters. But it, but when you have Captain America giving Falcon the shield, it makes no fucking sense. We have had like four goddamn movies about how good of friends he is with Bucky. And they don't even have a goodbye conversation on screen. I don't even know they were really knew each other aside from like the casual Avengers thing. Yeah, like where has like they've always told us Cap and Falcon are friends, but like when did that ever fucking come up? It was never in it. It never mattered. Yeah, you know, like especially because earlier in the scene when the Captain Americas were fighting each other, he got he got the other Captain America to let go by mentioning that Bucky's alive. Yeah. You know, and so that was like some big shocking, like, oh my God, he's the most important person to me at this point. Yeah. And I mean, like, literally, all of Winter Soldier is about Bucky. All of Civil War is Captain America willing to fight other Avengers over Bucky, pretty yeah. much. And like, and then you have him give it to Falcon, and it just doesn't, it, it feels like it has a bit of Last Jedi syndrome in that scene where it's like, well, everyone's been calling it that Bucky's going to become next Captain America. We have to subvert expectations. Mm-hmm. People can't see it coming, which is so stupid to me when 95% of this movie is fucking fan service now, anyways. Now I don't care about Captain America. Yeah. No. I barely did to begin with. You know, and they started to build it up a little bit in this movie, honestly. You're starting yeah. to see, like, yeah, Captain America is actually kind of a badass. Yeah. You know, and now it's like, all right, well, now that's done, and now we have fucking... Falcon, I'm Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. <laughs> Falcon Punch! <laughs> That'd be amazing. You know. He gets a stupid fucking costume, too. So, like... Well, now I don't... I'm never gonna go see another Captain America movie. Yeah. Because I just... There was no... Like, I just don't care about him. Like, yeah. I, I care way more about Bucky. I don't even give a shit about Bucky. I don't, but, like, honest. if you had to compare him, like... Yeah, it just... Having Falcon be it, this just doesn't make sense. Especially because Captain America is supposed to be, you know, from 1940... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And I, I did like Captain America's ending. I did too. Especially because he, you know, his entire life, ever since he got frozen, was him trying to adapt to the future. Yeah. And he had been there so long, and now he's back in his normal time. And now I feel like, instead of being from the past, he's this guy that's from the future. Yeah. You know, which was kind of an interesting little shift. It was. And it, it was cool having, um, having him sort of get that peaceful life when Tony couldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was another theme that just kind of came out of nowhere where like he has that support group and he has the picture of the girl and he's like you gotta move forward and what if he got snapped you know yeah right because he was back in the normal time like time period again like yeah. that, technically he was reset back where he was supposed to be yeah and like he lived his entire life through all of the previous Avengers stuff yeah like, well he couldn't have gotten snapped though well I guess that's true because I mean if he didn't in the first place he probably never would have yeah but, like, either way, he he was sitting there just living through the entire thing. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. No. Um, but it was nice. Yeah. I would have preferred if he had just stayed in the future best, and then we just never saw him again. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and, and they bring up the theme of you have to keep moving forward at the beginning for, like, three scenes, and then it never comes up into, again, mm-hmm. really. And then he doesn't move forward. So it's like, well, what, what was the point of that? Yeah. Like, that's not... Well, a lot of it, too, is I think they were trying to make it sound like because he was always you know the positive one saying yeah we got to move on yeah. he's having those like seminars with people yeah you know but oh that wasn't always he started to have development towards you know not just moving on but trying to actually like fix things like fix the yeah you know fix your problems and instead of just saying 
I'm going to live with it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it, it almost kind of makes sense that why he would stay back there because, you know, at the beginning he wasn't necessarily going to do anything about the snap. Yeah. You know, it was all about just looking forward. Which yeah. Is America, you know. America. So, I, I think thematically it, it was starting to work. They just didn't really push it as much as they could have, I think. Yeah. And I, and I feel like it would have been a little bit more satisfying if it had... Eh, I guess it does kind of tie into the end because they had to go into the past to fix the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I also want to talk about Iron Man's death. Yeah. So, uh, I thought it was super fucking telegraphed. I think everyone kind of knew going in he was going to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what did you think of it, though? Like, what, what did you think of him actually using the stones to get rid of Thanos' army to, and that killing him? The, the big thing that threw me off right on that scene when he got the soul stones, or the, all the, you know, infinity stones... Is how did he do that mm-hmm. so fast? Because yeah. he just went over for one thing, got knocked away, and then he's like, "Boom!" Now it's in my suit. Yep. He's like, "Now I have six stones." That confused bitch. me a little bit because, like, I'm like, "Did he trade gloves? How the fuck did he get those out?" You know, without having because every time so far you see the stones get taken from the gauntlet, mm-hmm. there's like an explosion of energy. You see Thanos pull the purple one out and fucking like, and yeah. as he pulls it out, it's like already sparking yep. and shit. You know, how did he manage to get all five of them out or all six or whatever so fast? And smoothly and incorporated into his suit. Yeah. And another thing, too, is in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, when you first see a Soul Stone used, mm-hmm. they make a very big deal about how you can't hold it. Yep. Like, all of them have to hold it together. Yep. This movie, everyone's fucking holding them. Hulk holds one, Captain America holds them. Like, everyone's just holding stones. Yep. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, and it almost killed Quill. Yeah. You know? He almost killed all, like, six of them. And it was a big deal that like anybody could just straight up hold it. And he, the only reason he why Quill, he goes half planet. The only reason he could is because he was like a god. Yeah. And now Iron Man's like, I just, I just grabbed six of them. Yeah. Hulk's like, I'm just gonna carry this in the past. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. And like, why could Hulk carry? Why would he be the one to use the Infinity Gauntlet that first time instead of Thor? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It. And that, and that's the big thing. It's like, I, I just, the whole scene. I, I get it. You know, I get why Tony was the one that had to do it, but yeah. like, I I felt like they just didn't build it up enough. You know, there wasn't enough tension in his death necessarily, even because mm-hmm. they kept mentioning how like you know if you it'll kill the average person. Yeah, if you try and do it, it's just too much for their body. And all that happened was he eventually got him, did it really quick, and then he's like, oh, now I'm all fucked up, and then yep. I die. It's like. G- give us a little bit more time for the impact to hit. Yeah. Well, especially you have that stupid fucking line he says right before he snaps. I am Iron Man. He's like, I am. And then there's like a minute and a half of silence. Like, Iron Man. <laughs> and then he snaps. It's so <laughs> stupid. And I heard everyone in the theater house go, <gasps> like, he said it. <laughs> Fuck, again, again, like, people want that fan service. It yeah. just blows my mind. Like, I, I want to feel something. Yeah. Um,. Did you have any other? Not really. I mean, that, that touched on a lot. I mean, there's some more nitpicky shit we could get into. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of it. I I, I would kind of like, um, though, if there's any good parts. I mean, I'd like that, to kind of point out, give a shout out to maybe. Again, like we can start with, you know, Captain America getting the hammer was probably the most impactful fucking scene. That was awesome. Oh, uh, where the fuck was Groot in the battle? They didn't show Groot. He showed up at the very end when he got blown up and Rocket's like, oh, no. Groot. Yeah, but like they didn't show him fighting, but it was awesome in the one where he stabbed everyone. Yeah, he's, he's like hitting him. motherfuckers with other motherfuckers. Yeah, Drax was barely in it. He just stabbed a dude once. Mantis. 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 Where is my Mantis? It all comes back to Mantis. <laughs> She's Man- like, all of a sudden, like they had that one big group and they all grouped up and started walking. Yeah. And it's like... What the fuck are you gonna do, Mantis? <laughs> it's, like in the first, it's like in the first Avengers when all the aliens are coming and Black Widow cocks a pistol. It's like, sit the fuck down. Wait, what are you gonna do? You're gonna pop nine of them in the ass? Right. And, like, and then you're gonna get torn apart. Which is another thing about Bucky that kind of annoys me. He's like, yeah, he has a machine gun. He has a machine gun and a shiny chrome arm. But yeah, fucking Mantis, like, what? she's walking like, she's all like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking kick <laughs> All the other ones are like, have their glowing, you know, power hands yeah. and like, weapons and shit. And she's like, I'm gonna feel things. Thor has legitimately an axe and a hammer built by the gods. That, that he can fucking Pikachu, like, down deep. <laughs> he can summon and, lightning. And, and Mantis is like, 
I can make people go calm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when Captain America did that fucking, like, lightning from the sky yeah. thing with the hammer, I was just thinking, like, fucking playing Super Smash Brothers, just doing yeah. the lightning bolt thing over and over. We just need He's, Detective Pikachu to pop in. He just starts spanning it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that was... You know, and, and uh, Wasp didn't do anything. Yeah, because... Uh, I forgot Wasp was even a thing in this. I guess she yeah. she popped out for a second. She's like, hey, I'm back from the quantum realm. Yep, she's like, I'm back from the quantum realm. Or she wasn't I even in the she quantum realm. Snapped. Yeah, she was like, I'm back from being snapped. I'm going to fly you over to the van, and then I'm not going to do anything for the rest of the And day. then they're like, the van's fucked. Yep. And then they fix the van, and How then Thanos breaks the van. Uh, they had 10 minutes. It took them 10 and minutes. They didn't even... Because they established that it was fucked, basically. Yeah, and they then were... it was just working. Because they went in there like, it's broken, everything's fucked up. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, now it works. And then they're like, hey, it's working. And then Captain Marvel's like, I'm going to do it. And then Thanos just throws his fucking staff, breaks it, and that's it. Like, yeah. All right, well, we tried. Which I was kind of, I was almost expecting, like, Thor or Captain America to do, like, a lightning strike on the van to, like, jumpstart it. Yeah. Because they had that earlier with the with, hammer. Yeah, with uh, Tony's fucking pacemaker or whatever it is. Yeah. And <laughs> especially, I, I almost would have liked it if they just couldn't bring the stones back. Yeah, you know, if they're gonna do another movie, do it on that because yeah. like how it was that was almost more important yeah. than this timeline because yeah. like that was gonna fuck up like almost an infinite number number of other realities because they took the stones from their corrective spots yeah. in the universe. Well, I did like the scene of Banner talking to Tola Swinton. Yeah, that was cool. That was a neat little scene. But and and that was building up to something that was made it seem way more important. They're like, you have to bring these back. Yeah, it's of utmost importance that you bring yeah. these stones back and then, then Tony's like yeah I'll bring them back or no Captain America's like yeah I'll bring yeah. them back and then yeah, he does don't worry about it I won't have any problems you know and they just built another machine for it like I would have liked it if you know they're in the fight the thing gets broken they're not thinking about trying to like bring the stones back and all of a sudden at yeah. the end they think they won they're like oh shit you know and then there's this other reality that's just getting overrun with them well, and the thing too is like they were acting they were in the middle of the battle and they were like you have to take them back right now mm -hmm. but it's like if you're just traveling back in time to those realities, you don't have a schedule. No. You can go you can, back whenever. Yeah, because you can go back to the exact point. So <laughs> just fucking worry about this right now? They would have been better off just leaving the van where it was. Yeah. And then coming back to it. The thing is, if they would have succeeded bringing the stones back, they wouldn't have been able to stop Thanos. Yeah. And the Earth would have gotten fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, maybe just hold off a little bit. Yeah. Because, I mean, what are you going to do? Kill all those things? Mario, we were supposed to be talking about things we liked. So right. we, got, we got into another negative tangent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I shouldn't say that, because there was... Overall, I was pretty disappointed, but there were... I liked scenes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, there was good moments. Most of it, though, I felt was just... It was just boring. Yeah. A lot of it. It was a lot of, like, bad dialogue that was trying to be more weighty than it actually is. Mm -hmm. I did like the joke of uh, that's America's ass. Yeah. That was pretty funny. That was good because that, that's really playing into the whole like, yeah, Captain America is the most cliche superhero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck and, yeah, America, go team. And yeah. I think I think Ant-Man works really well when you're, uh, when he's with other people. Yeah. Like, he can't carry a movie on his own worth of shit, mm -hmm. but he's good for like moments like that well and i like i almost kind of wish it was a little bit more into the personal stuff because like when he went back home and found his you know daughter all grown up yeah you know like stuff like that's pretty powerful you yeah. know and you can work really you can go really far on that kind of stuff and that's almost what i want to see because yeah. like, give me the emotion behind the snap instead yeah. of like oh you know there's fucking half of everybody's gone now like show me the personal reasons like make it make me realize what impact this really had on people yeah and and you know, I'm fine with a three-hour runtime, mm -hmm. but I just, I wish it was smaller. I wish it was more personal. I wish the last 45 minutes wasn't a big fucking noise battle. Because, uh, like, when they're going such big scale, which I get is the finale or whatever, but, like, they're just, it's hard to relate to it. It's hard yeah. to really put your, like, heart behind it. Because there's no context. Like, I don't fucking know what it's like to be 80 feet tall and punch a giant air whale in the yeah. face because like the scene when tony's you know weighing up his family or you know everybody else mm -hmm. that that was really powerful yep. you know ant-man coming back to see his daughter was really powerful you know like that's when it works you know and then like showing the relationship where tony meets his father you know which they hammed up a little bit but um but it was the guy from Mad Men, so it's okay you know and captain america seeing yep. you know 
like the woman that he, he loved before he got frozen. Thor were talking to his mom. Yeah, which that was another really strong one too. Like, yeah, that's such a powerful thing, especially no, because they both knew it was going to happen. Yeah, and that would be the last time they would ever see each other. It was like the uh, the episode of Futurama. Oh yeah, that one fucks me up. <laughs> Fry, Fry's like in the dream he's yeah. like in a coma and he's talking to his mom Dude, yeah and that stuff like I, I would have loved a lot more to look into the personal lives like humanize them yeah you know yeah they're these powerful people but like they even talked about how like you know Thor is just like everybody else yep. you know he still fails and feels regret and failure and like play off of that you know yeah cause that's way Humanism more relatable bit. Re- relatable yeah so if, if they could just give me another movie about that shit, I'd be super into it. <laughs> I want to feel, damn it. I also, I also think it's interesting. I think we're kind of done talking about Endgame for the yeah. most part. I, I think it's interesting when we're looking at the MCU as a whole that uh, this technically isn't the end of Phase Three. Mm-hmm. Spider Man Far From Home is, yeah, which I think is very bizarre. Um, and I kind of get, you know, that Marvel likes to do the big dramatic movies, which I don't. I didn't find this movie dramatic at all. I think having Captain America retire, um, Black Widow die, and Iron Man die was not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I really would have liked more. Give me some stakes. You know? Yeah. Make it seem like these people were the turning point of the universe. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, the battle, like, there's no... Other than Iron Man at the end, there's, like, no sacrifices. It never, it never feels like they're about to lose at any second. Nope. Um, so I'm kind of interested how they're going to go into Spider-Man Far From Home mm-hmm. I'm sure they won't really address it much and I know that they like you know balancing it out like they balanced out Infinity War with fucking Ant-Man and the Wasp mm-hmm. um, but I think the MCU is going to have a hard time getting people invested again yeah because I feel like now they're like okay this is it yeah like I my favorite characters are dumb. Yeah. It's just Thor, and he's just with the Guardians now. Yeah, and I mean, I'll see Spider-Man Far From Home, because I like Spider-Man. I liked the first one. Um, and Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. Mm-hmm. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. But other than that, like, I, I don't give a shit. Like, I still want to see the new Guardians of the Galaxy, because I think that's my favorite subgroup. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not really serious, but it's not really necessarily supposed to be. Yeah. But um, I'm just worried that... Now, if they have Thor and Ant-Man in the next one, which I know they will, because that's the whole thing they set up. Yeah. It's like, I don't want that. Just yeah. give me a Guardians of the Galaxy. Give me my group back. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and the whole bringing Gamora back seemed cheap. Um, especially when we didn't get Loki back. We didn't get Heimdall back. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're like, here now here's a Gamora from five years ago that doesn't know anything. And now Guardians of the Galaxy 3, you know a good chunk of it's going to be reestablishing their re- romance, which we which already saw. After all they've been through? Yeah. Which they've been through a fucking lot. You know, yep. like, how, how do you have a stronger relationship between her and Quill not having gone through those things? Yeah. Or one of them going through it and the other one not. Yeah. Um, and I don't think... I, I think I was a lot more sour on Guardians of the Galaxy 2 than a lot of people. But I don't think James Gunn is especially great at dealing with that drama, mm-hmm. so I feel like that romance is going to completely fall flat. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm worried about too, because like, yeah. which sucks is the first Guardians of the Galaxy is probably my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's gotten to the point where so many of these characters just feel done, even though they're not letting them be done. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't have really any interest in seeing where Guardians of the Galaxy characters go. I feel like I've seen everything there. I have no interest in watching more Ant Man. Like, I, I just want to see more small scale shit. I think. Like, yeah. Give me some plots that just are. They also did this. It's not the end of the universe, regardless. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But like, like Thor. Okay, I, I guess I could take more Thor as long as it's Thor Ragnarok. Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, Ant Man. I don't want to see any more of. Fucking Captain Marvel. I could give less than two shits. I do not care whatsoever. Nope. Like, it just I don't. There's nothing pulling me back in, except for. Spider Man. Spider Man. But like and that's only cuz, you know, he's young, he's got his whole, you know, superhero yeah. future ahead of him. Yeah, and he's well well written and funny. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I, I don't know what else is there for me. Yeah. There's nothing at all. That's kind of where I'm at. I think as having seen this, I'm pretty done with the Marvel universe. Problem though is that no one else is going to be. <laughs> no. <'cause laughs> everyone just eats the shit up. Yep. <laughs> but that's their prerogative, I guess. Yeah. Well, 
Any uh, any closing thoughts? Nope. I'm really tired and it's snowing like fucking hell out there. Yeah, so. what's up with that shit? I don't know. I might... See. I'm gonna snap the snow away. <laughs> That's what let's, I would do. If I had the fucking Infinity Gauntlet, I would snap winter away. I would just snap all of Wisconsin. <laughs> it's just gone. Lake Wisconsin. It's just it's just a void where it used to be. <laughs> Fuck it. All that's left is fucking... Everyone's, all, it's just the Upers. Everyone's got a week to get the fuck out of Wisconsin, then it's gone. The Upper Peninsula is the only thing that's left. It's, just surround, it's gonna be an island in the Great Lakes. <laughs> You call it the Great Lake at that point. <laughs> the Great Lake. Yeah, uh, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I think, again, if you like Marvel movies, you're going to fucking like it. Remember to tune in next time for Super Troopers yeah. 2. <laughs> A very different movie. If you want to follow us, we're on YouTube. And Instagram is Default White Guys. And we are on SoundCloud and iTunes as Day of Sex Cinema. Thanks so- for listening. We'll see you next Monday. Send us memes. <laughs>